Hey guys, welcome back to my channels. Hello friends, old and new, and it's Debsy and place to be. It's Debsy. Oh yeah! That's me. Boop, Debsy. Weekend edition. Happy Friday. It's Friday night. Just got paid. Ain't gonna go out and get Watch your mouth. I'm not going to do any of that. I am in for the night as usual. My pajamas. Did I, did I work in them? Sure. Did I sleep in them last night? Yeah. So hope everybody had a great Friday and I hope everybody has a looking forward into the weekend. I hope everybody has a great weekend, whether you're going out, whether you're just noodling at home. So it's Friday and I'm going to be filming two videos today. You're going to see one tonight and one tomorrow. Right now, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of season three, Real Housewives of a Salty Lake City. And it's salty, ladies and gentlemen. So season three, aptly the name of the episode, Revenge marks the spot. The main issue that was at the core of this episode was Meredith and Lisa. Now last year, I will fully admit, I only watched probably about maybe two or three episodes and then I just lost interest for some reason. But Meredith, in a hot mic moment, um, I don't know if she was unaware of how this whole Real Housewife thing thing works. I mean, it was her second season. She's in the bathroom and she started screaming about how, Mer how Meredith is a whore and she cheats on her fan. She cheats on her husband and her family is, oh, they are posers. They try and be perfect, but they're really not. And how her husband, Seth, um, goes from job to job. They can't afford their own home and this and that. So, Questions her marriage, questions their finances. Okay, so that is at the core of this episode. So we have we have two meetings from with two unlikely friend couplings. The first one, Meredith and Jen. They hang out. They have some. They drink some champs out in the winter, out in the winter cold in a in a um in a hot tub. And Meredith and Jen talk about, you know, Lisa Barlow's hot mic moment and what she said. Meredith pretty much said, listen, if you're going to come after me, please make sure that you're ready because I have heard rumors that Lisa has had some infidelities in her life as well meaning she has been cheating. That's what I'm going to tell you. Lisa, you better come prepared because Meredith Marks is going to come become is going to come prepared with her all of her receipts for certain. So yes, Meredith once again says, "Listen, if you if she wants to bring this up, I'm sure I can bring up the rumors that I had heard about her her marriage and also her finances." Um, across town, Heather and Lisa are doing lunch. Surprising because Heather was like, listen, if she's talking to me, she must really need help. And she's scraping the bottom of the barrel because she would never have called me. So they're talking, they're having lunch and that they t immediately talk about what Lisa had said about Meredith. And Lisa asks Heather, um, or, let me rewind. Heather says that's, you know, that's what people are going to be asking you. Is that how you really feel about Meredith? And Lisa asks Heather, is that how you think I think? Is that what you think that I think about, he about Meredith? And Heather being Heather says, yeah, that's, that's what I think that you think that about Meredith. If, if Heather Gray is nothing, Heather Gray is nothing if not honest, brutally honest, um, with you. So Heather says, listen, you're going to have to apologize and eat some humble pie. And that's just it. Um, then 
Heather goes over to Whitney's um, where we see that Whitney's daughter, Bobby Rose, is making a pros and cons list about boys. I'd like to see that. I would like to see that list. I'd like to add some. Um, Whitney then talks about leaving the Mormon church and she talks about leaving the Mormon church just because of the example that it sets for her children and the fact that women, how women are treated in, in the church and the fact that they're treated, they're not treated equally and they're almost treated, to me it sounds like second class citizens. Now I'm just saying relaying what she said. That's not what I think, that's just what she had said. I don't really talk too much about religion. That's what she had said. Um, so she's saying that she is going to officially ask to be taken off of the, um, taken off the, the what was it called? The books, taken, taken off the books. Because I guess until you say that, please take me off the books, then they're gonna come to your door and be like, listen, where's our money? Because you're still tied to the church. So she goes online to a place, I think it was called Quit Mormon, dot com or something, print something up, find it, and she's out. We then see Jen talking to her husband, Coach Shaw, and they're talking about planning a 51st birthday party for him with like Harlem Nights theme because that's his favorite movie. And so they're going to have the party at her friend Angie's house because they had to downgrade their house because of all these legal issues that have caused a financial strain. I felt real bad for her when she said that she had to downgrade her closet from a massive walk-in to a closet that one of us, some of us peons have. Phil, I feel bad. Can you tell? I feel real bad. So the night of the party comes, everybody is there. Everybody is there. And let me tell you also, another thing that I like that Coach Shaw said, Coach Shaw had said, who's going to be invited? Jen said, who's going to be invited? And he had, and her husband, Coach Shaw had said something like, listen, I don't want there to be any drama. I just want to enjoy the party. I don't want this to be the place where people are going to confront each other. I just want to party. That's it. I, I agree. So everybody shows up. Everybody looks beautiful. Um, Lisa, I mean, Lisa doesn't immediately go up to Meredith, but Lisa finds Meredith and tells her she'd like to talk. Meredith, you know, off camera and in the confessional says, um, you had two months to reach out to me and, and you didn't. Um, she then, and Meredith says, we'll talk, some, we'll talk at a later time which I understand, this is not the place to do it. I mean, once again, do you really want to ruin another party? I mean, that's what happens on the Real Housewives of whatever. Lisa then walks, turns, and walks directly into Seth, Meredith's husband. She said some nasty things about Seth, too, about how he doesn't have a job, and he's between jobs, and he didn't have any money, and this and that. She then attempts to talk to Seth, tries to, she apologizes to him. Um, Seth, whereas Meredith doesn't entertain her at all, Seth entertains her a little bit. He tells her he was hurt by what, by what she said. And then Lisa pours on the tears. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. I don't think of Meredith like that. I don't think of you like that. I can't sleep. I've lost sleep over this. I don't know. I, I mean, maybe she did, but I don't know. Um, and then she is, she says that well, he was like, why did you say this? And she, she said, everybody on the van right there was telling me, um, was telling me that Meredith isn't your friend. She's not your friend. And I'm not making, ex I'm not making excuses. And then goes on to tell, you know, excuses and reasons why she said this. Um, and she said, and she, then she said, it wasn't meant to be heard. So are you, so are you just apologizing because you got caught? So if, you, if this wouldn't have been, if you wouldn't have been miked and this wasn't heard, then you wouldn't be apologizing? I don't know. I just, I don't know what to, I don't know what to believe of it. I mean, I get that you were apologizing 
But if you're not truly sorry, is it really like a genuine apology or is it just words? So um, they, they walked away and Seth basically kind of saying like, well, this is going to take time and I can't process this right now. And then Lisa, Lisa says, um, no matter how many times I say I'm sorry and I apologize, if no one listens and it's not being accepted, then there's just nothing I can do. Um, I need to move on. And then, she, and then she leaves. Um, and I get that. Like, if you're going to apologize and like, it's a, if you're going to apologize and it's a genuine apology, then okay, somebody needs to accept this and, and so you can all move on. But I was feeling like she was, like she was just saying, I'm sorry, because she got caught. Um, and, and Seth had brought up, Seth had brought this up to like Meredith and Jen afterwards. And he said, he thinks she's, a, she, he thinks she's excusing it and she's not taking accountability. And she said, he said, is it an apology when you're excusing the behavior? So, right, if you're saying, if you're saying, I'm sorry, but then you're just offering excuses as to why you said it, I mean, are you really even genuinely sorry? That's what I'm wondering. So, I don't know. So that that's going to be that's going to carry into next week too because next week the ladies head out to awkwardness in the Arizona sun and talk about Lisa's alleged infidelity. So they're like we're going to go to our Arizona for a girls trip. Hooray! Let's all be awkward. In a hot tub in sun. So there we go. Um we got a lot coming up on on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Um, as you know, Jen Shaw, I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. Why did everybody say that they they were guilty? I'm not guilty. Fast forward, she pled, she pled guilty. So yeah, there's that. We're gonna have Lisa and Meredith. We're also going to be having um, some drama between Whitney and her cousin, Heather. And the question I'm wondering, who punched Heather? So join me next week when we try and figure more of this out. So if no one has told you yet today, I love you, you're loved, seen, and heard, please make sure that you put love, kindness, compassion, acceptance, hope, and positivity out there. And everybody have a great weekend. And I love you. Bye, guys.